Heavyweight is in fuego in 2023 and coming up this weekend, a couple of guys looking to restart win streaks. We have VFS Academy's own Carlos Hernandez taking on Psycho Dinius Bondar, a guy who was able to get it done over at WWFC. And Bondar actually might be a surprise to some people if they didn't watch the videos last week. He got the win at the GA MMA Amateur Championships in 2019 at Bantamweight over Steven Erceg, who just picked up a giant exactly. performance bonus decision win over top 10 one David Dvorak in this flyweight division. So Bondar's already got that feather in his cap and he's one of those guys that I know the record 16 and 4. I know that GMMA or GAMMA amateur championship took place when both of those guys were already pros, which is weird. But if you do consider it for Bondar, he had good wins against a bad level competition, but somewhat similar to Tainara Lisboa, who debuted against Jessica Rose Clark, you could see how good Bondar was even against that competition. Now, the sad thing for Bondar is he was a big favorite against Malcolm Gordon as UFC was. debut. And I don't think a debut could go any worse with an injury than Bondars did against Malcolm Gordon. I won't show the picture. Tom Aspinall, uh, Curtis Blades comes But that wasn't on. a debut fight. So no, it's just... So for Dennis Bondar, things went badly. And Bondar's been booked in a couple of different matchups. Now, he lost 2021 due to multiple fight bookings falling out, and some due to injury, some all over the place. He was, earlier on this year, Bondar was supposed to take on Ode Osborne. It wasn't on a Conor McGregor card. It would have been Surprising. an Ode Osborne card. But Bondar forced out of that matchup so now ultimately he is a year plus removed from that debut against Malcolm Gordon and I know we were really excited about that debut from Bondar oh, yeah. out of Ukraine for this fight he was previously training out of Kharkov top team he's out of Kharkiv Ukraine obviously the geopolitical situation difficult there he's training out of Germany for this matchup you're going to love this. Planet Eater is the gym. That's the Peter Sabata gym. We've seen Dustin Steusfuss out of that gym. Uh, Mert Ozildrum, who had a, a, an interesting fight against Jarno Aaron. So a good gym for Dennis Bonder getting set for this matchup. Going back and watching the tape for both of these guys got me fired up for this fight. So I'm really excited about this one. And it should be a great matchup. I'm really excited to see Bondar come back and get a matchup like this in his debut. But I do have to say this. Bondar's a guy who relies on his athleticism quite a bit. He's a physical guy. So oh, yeah. I do worry a little bit about the knee injury and I do think that's a fair point to bring up. Just because if he was somebody who was all technique kind of on the outside not using his physicality and his wrestling then I wouldn't worry about it as much. But I do feel like the style with which he fights under is going to be affected by that knee. So hopefully comes back and everything is good because his, I do his elbow about, the injury sorry the elbow because again I just do worry about that in some of those positions because how does Bondar like to fight he's gonna get on the inside he's gonna go for the legs and he will go for trips up top too and that's thank you elbow that's what he will go for I do worry about some of those throws some of those trips because those are techniques that are going to rely on him to use that mobility use that physicality and for Bondar it is so essentially a part of his game that I worry a little bit but for Carlos Hernandez I just want to shift the spotlight to him really quick He's someone who can make you pay if you are not at your top and if you are reaching for some of those positions. And that's why I bring it up. If Bondar does feel like he is somewhat limited on the feet because of that injury, like you say, it's been over a year. It's been a long time. We hope everything is okay. Carlos Hernandez is someone who not only can strike moving forwards, but is comfortable moving backwards with some power shots too. And I could see Hernandez making him really pay for moving into those clinch well, positions because Bondar is going to have to fight like one half of our main event. What do I always say Marvin Vittori is really good at? He strikes into the clinch and he avoids big power shots. Well, Hernandez is going to make Bondar pay as he does move into the clinch. Hernandez has much better volume and similar to a guy like Dennis Bondar, Carlos Hernandez has an equally impressive amateur record. He was an IMMAF world champ going back to 2014 and in his amateur days he beat Charles and Jose Johnson so that really is an impressive stat again he picked up a loss in his pro debut did Carlos Hernandez won eight straight won on Dana White's contender series he then he was able to get the win over Victor Altamirano by split decision the former LFA flyweight and the wrestling champ. defense was the issue and there. His, his last time out Hernandez struggled with the takedown of Alain Nascimento who was just booked to talk, take on a ranked fighter in Tim Elliott. Now, when I look at a fight like this, Hernandez is one of those guys that if he needs to wrestle, he can wrestle. If he needs to strike, he can strike. And Hernandez is a guy that's going to really strain together a lot of good boxing combinations. When you look at a guy like Dennis Bondar, a lot of power shots to close the gap to get the takedown. And going back and watching the tape, Bondar's last win was back in 2020 against now 19 and 13 Kenan Jafarli. 
Jeff Farley. And in that matchup, it's really aggressive. It's a small cage that looked like the UFC's apex cage. And if you consider it, he is much more finish over position. There were some awkward moments where he puts the knee on the chest of Jeff Farley. Jeff Farley and then the top. rest like, what's going on? But yeah, Bondar from minute one to minute 15, he's going to be going for the finish now. In that one in the first round, good movement on the feet from Bondar. But at one point, he gets pieced up by a six-punch combo from Jeff Farley. And then he has to shoot a panic takedown. He gets it down to the mat. He ultimately gets the second round finish by, uh, it was an arm triangle. If you look at it for Bondar too, the craziest part for me, if it's a big cage, if it's a small cage... If it's the Kumite mat that he fought in the rematch against Lam Ambatsumian, and I'll throw some pictures up there, they're fighting on a flat mat. And I went back and watched Bloodsport here about a month ago, and I couldn't believe the amount of people that they hired as extras to go, is he going to the Kumite? It's going to be the Kumite. It's like they tried to trademark the word Kumite and hope that they could sell it to stuff. UFC 4 to get Israel out of Sanya to get dancing on that. But when you look at it for Bondar, he's going for a lot of takedowns. He has his opponent against the end of the mat. And at multiple points, his opponent slides off the mat. Even as Bondar is going for a heel hook, they both slide off the mat. So some wild stuff there. But going back and looking at it again, you're going to have to watch out for the kicks of Hernandez, the boxing of Hernandez, the defensive wrestling. It was shown to be an issue against Nascimento but typically it's not the biggest hurry or hurry or worry but for both of these guys a lot of experience and when I look at them both Hernandez I see as a guy that could play around on the fringes of the top 15 Bonner could either surprise or he has a Tim Elliott career that's outside that's of the top 15 slim, yeah. because at times Bonner gets hit and he looks like Elliott kind of springboarding and then he's got to shoot for takedowns and like Elliott he's really good at flowing and scrambling in positions but I do worry about uh, you know him facing some of those upper echelon guys if Bonner fought Brandon Royval it would not go all that well for him now if we look at this matchup Bonner opened the underdog he's still about there Carlos Hernandez is a slight favorite we have a look at the top all votes Matt surprised us there to you I'm gonna say over under I think the fan vote's gonna be different than the odds I'm gonna say over under 62 and a half percent bonder I'll say under I'm gonna say under and it is the opposite way so 574 total votes 66 percent Hernandez 90 percent by decision for the 34 percent that have bonder 45 percent by submission 45 percent by decision who do you have in the matchup? I have a hard time with this fight because I think Bondar can have success with some of those panic takedowns. Like, even if he does get hurt on the feet, if he shoots for the hips of Hernandez and he's able to accomplish the takedown, I could see him being able to kind of uh, counteract and outweigh the activity Hernandez is able to uh, do on the feet. But for Hernandez, it does come down to how does he react to that pressure of Bondar. I'm going to ever so slightly go with Carlos Hernandez in the matchup. I think he is going to be able to land the slightly more damaging shots, be it on the back foot and the front foot. But this is a really difficult fight to predict. And a real sick or swim matchup. And I did make a mistake because in the Jafarli fight, it was all Bondar. In the fight that Bondar had against Kewin Jacques, who at the time was 19 years old, that's when he gets hit and hit hard. And he's got to panic for the takedown. He ends up getting the finish. I like Bondar in the matchup. I like the motor compared to a guy like Carlos Hernandez. I think Bondar is really going to push a pace in this one. Try and get back some of that time away because, again, his last win was about three years ago. So, for me, it will be Bondar in the fight. But a big-time matchup in a stacked flyweight division. It will never die. 2018. What was that? I don't remember. Matt, split on this pick. Some big-time matchups on the card. The co-main event. You like scrambles. You like fights. You like Zarukian taking on Silva. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks. We always say let's get into it